three-star resort at the heart of Orlando's action-packed International Drive, ominously priced at $85 per night. But is it meeting people's expectations? Does it deserve your suspicion? Or could it be the most sensible way to cut the costs for your next Orlando vacation? Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit and for this video I'm going to go through the key features of the Rosen Inn Point Orlando and I'll provide a rundown of both the positive and negative reviews that I've seen and I'll also give some tips that'll hopefully help you get the best out of any vacation at this resort. Now this hotel does have motel vibes but it's a motel on steroids coming in at 26 acres, 10 stories high, it has a gift shop, a restaurant bar, a Starbucks cafe, 24 hour convenience store, an arcade room, a kids playground and a pool area. So this Rosen Inn offers free Wi-Fi, no resort fees and kids under 9 eat for free. You can say what you want about this hotel, which does have its issues, but you can't deny its commitment to value. Alright then, so this hotel is right in the middle of International Drive, which is sort of like Orlando's Vegas Strip, but without the casinos, if that makes any sense. And because of that, it does divide some people. Personally, I think it's a lot of fun. So specifically, this Rosen Inn Hotel is opposite Point Orlando on iDrive, and Point Orlando is kind of an outdoor mall area with an impressive offering of shops, restaurants, and entertainment. Far too many to mention here, but I should highlight the Wonderworks, 4DX, IMAX Cinema, BB King's Blues Bar, and the Improv Comedy Club. You've also got some really good other restaurants and attractions away from Point Orlando on iDrive, north and south of this resort. In my next video, I'll be providing a rundown of the attractions and dining options on iDrive. For those of you without a car, there are free shuttles to SeaWorld and the Universal Parks, which is yet another way to save costs. There's a shuttle going to the Disneyland parks, but there is a charge for using this. Overall, the rooms are very well received. They're stocked with all the essential money-saving hotel appliances like refrigerator, microwave, coffee machine. You also get a safe, iron, ironing board, I've read an absurd number of reviews of people praising the quality of the hair dryers, with many guaranteeing that they will be better than yours at home, so you can save some luggage space there. Each bedside has a power socket with USB charging ports, which I feel surely needs to become law at some point in the near future. The general consensus is that the rooms are very clean and they all come with a lot more space than you deserve for the cost. In addition, the beds are said to be very substantial too. Outside your room you've got laundry facilities and there's an ice machine on every other floor which comes in handy. So let's now talk about the services provided by the Rosen Inn. So as mentioned it has a 24 hour convenience store known as the Light Bite Mini Market which is highly appreciated with its guests with my nation's finest culinary traditions well catered for. This shop has a pleasant outdoor dining area which is really nice to have when you're chilling out in the mornings. And this leads us outside to the stunning tropical landscaping provided by this resort, which is clearly something that this hotel takes a lot of pride in. And it's made a very good impression with its guests, I would say. You can't really talk about the positive reviews of this hotel without talking about the value, because pretty much every four and five star review is praising the great value offered here. And it bears repeating that you get free Wi-Fi, free parking and free shuttles to the non-Disney parks with no other hidden fees. And people are also extremely pleased that there's such a big variety of dining and evening entertainment options within walking distance. The Negatives this hotel is reviewed at four stars on TripAdvisor, which is pretty decent for the price and you have to give them credit for that. By far the biggest complaint about this hotel is the noise. And unfortunately it does come from more than one area. Part of it is down to the structure of the busy complex. So you've got the I-4 behind you, 
And I'm also hearing you get some noise coming from the entrance side as well. Furthermore, you've got a helicopter flight attraction further down the road, which some people appreciated, but others found the noise irritating after a while. At the end of the video, I'll discuss room selection in more detail and how to best avoid noise at this hotel. Possibly the second biggest complaint is that it's not the prettiest looking hotel. You could reasonably argue that it needs some cosmetic improvements, and I believe this is most apparent with the walkways and especially the stairwells, which, in all honesty, don't look great. So another issue that I saw complain about was privacy. The way the hotel is laid out, you've got windows looking out onto the walkways at the front of the room rather than having balcony windows at the back and some people feel a bit uncomfortable having people close by walking past and being able to look into your room. Supposedly the rooms have privacy glass but I did read one reviewer who said that it didn't work well. For me personally, I'd be quite happy to just draw the curtains in these situations but I know some of you may want to have some natural sunlight coming through. The food at this hotel gets mixed reviews and to be honest there's nothing really noteworthy to say here and the same goes for the bar too. When looking through the reviews there did seem to be some people who felt a bit pressured into giving tips on occasion all around the hotel. So this includes bar and restaurant staff and the cleaners. One reviewer all the way back in 2016 had an interesting conspiracy theory which was that on the two days that she had forgotten to tip her cleaner, she returned to her hotel room to find that the fridge temperature had been turned all the way down, freezing all food inside. I can't say I'm entirely persuaded by this but it was amusing nevertheless. I think a possible explanation for all this with the tips is that this hotel attracts a lot of Brits, I believe because of the value it offers for people who have to spend a lot on flights. And we Brits are famously awful with American tipping etiquette. So in summary, I really think if you're deciding to go with the Rosen in Point Orlando, you have to have realistic expectations. It really is value over luxury here. It has its problems, but when you compare it to similarly priced alternatives, it's really hard to beat. I'd be interested to know if anyone in the comments could find a worthy competitor in terms of the value. Be warned, it's not going to dazzle. If you're only used to staying on site at Disney, you may be in for a culture shock. This is no Polynesian resort. But if you're in Orlando mainly for the big parks and you want the bars and restaurants on iDrive at your doorstep, then this hotel will not disappoint. Hi, before we get on to the tips for this hotel, I just wanted to ask that if you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe, uh, including the bell notification button. It would be really appreciated. Thank you so much. So now for my tips for the Rosen Inn Point Orlando. Number one. If you're hoping to book yourself onto the Universal Shuttle at Rosen Inn, make sure you do so 24 hours in advance as it will get fully booked out. Number two. Room selection is tricky here. A couple of people suggested asking for a room overlooking iDrive, but one reviewer said that their room in Block C opposite the Pizza Hut was very noisy with taxis and staff outside. Personally, I would request a room on the sixth floor in Block D, which is where it's said to be the quietest. But you may want to check if the Wi-Fi is any good high up over there beforehand if that's an issue. If security is a concern, which it is for many with budget conscious hotels, I'd recommend requesting a room overlooking the pool area if you can, where it will be well populated. Number 3. Instead of using the taxis, many have suggested using Uber or Lyft, which are said to come in a lot cheaper. Number 4. If you're taking a car, don't unpack until after you've checked in because chances are you'll need to drive around to park near your room because of the size of the complex. Number five. I read one review which suggested that you can use the fitness center at the Rosen Plaza, which is next door, with it being owned by the same company. I haven't verified this, so you may want to check with the reception beforehand.
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please hit that like button. You may want to check out my other review of the Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Generally, I will alternate between a budget hotel and a more expensive hotel every week. The goal of this channel is to review every single noteworthy hotel in Orlando, so do stick around and subscribe if that's something you'd be interested in. Thank you.